is Turkey, the land of in-between. Here in the harbor of Istanbul, east meets west and north meets south. For this is the Bosphorus, part of the Turkish Straits which separate Europe from Asia and links the Black Sea to the Mediterranean. Down through history, it has been the key to prosperity and the foundation of empire. Here, a great city grew, called Constantinople by the Byzantine Romans and Istanbul by the Ottoman Turks. It was the seat of government and center of commerce for centuries. Although it is not the capital of the present-day Turkish Republic, it is a modern metropolis of over a million people. Just outside the city stand magnificent Rumil Hisar. From this fortress in 1452, Mehmet the Conqueror took Constantinople and launched the campaign that was to spread the Turkish Ottoman Empire far and wide over much of Europe, the Near East and Africa. At its height, it rivaled Rome in all its glory. And as Rome before it, it too slowly crumbled apart. By the beginning of the 20th century, Turkey had shrunk to this. Her great cities were dying, her people impoverished. Foreigners controlled her trade. She was a degenerate empire known only as the land of the Fez and the Harem. 90% of the population could not even read the Arabic script that was their alphabet. The final blow came in 1918 when allied with Germany, she lost the First World War. Her sultan signed the humiliating Treaty of Serbs, a virtual dismemberment of the nation. Allied troops occupied Turkish soil. There was destruction and violence, with many of her people made homeless. But Turkish pride is strong and fighting spirit high. Aroused and bitter, the people turned toward new leadership and founded in their World War general, Mustafa Kemal. Deep in the hinterland, he gathered an army about him, defied his sultan, and repudiated the Treaty of Serbs. In one brilliant campaign that amazed the Western world, he swept the foreign troops from Turkey. By 1923, her borders were secure. She maintained control of the vital Dardanelles. Mustafa Kemal had created a new nation. For the first time in centuries, Turkey belonged to her own people. Ankara was chosen for the capital. Here, Mustafa Kemal, the first president of Turkey, established his government. Today, it is one of the most modern of cities. In this magnificent plaza, the people raised a statue to their leader and crowned his name with the title Ataturk, meaning father of all the Turks. Under the guidance of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, Turkey turned to the west. Here in the presidential mansion, he set about his gigantic task. A new civil code of law was enacted. Women were given the vote and equal rights with men. A modern Western alphabet replaced the old Arabic script. Western dress was adopted, the fez abolished, and polygamy made unlawful. Great things were accomplished, but a way of life can't be changed overnight. So today, Turkey is truly the land of in-between. The old is giving way to the new, but often now, they must exist side by side. At Izmir and Istanbul, the harbors are full of activity. Old lighters rowed by hand and modern seagoing ships from all nations. Lying as she does across the trade routes of the world, commerce has always been a prime concern. Her wharves are busy with the export of foodstuffs, tobacco, cotton, and the famous Angora wool that comes from goats native only to Turkey's high plateau. She imports machinery and fuel oil necessary for the modernization of her industry. The straits abound with fish, and along the coastal cities, seafood is a significant item in the Turkish diet.
wheat is another vital food. The broad Anatolian plains are admirably suited to modern dry farming methods. But it was not so long ago that Turkey, because she lacked equipment and technology, had to buy wheat from foreign nations. Today, however, with new machinery, the Turkish farmer harvests not only enough for national consumption, but also for export abroad. Sugar beets recently introduced have become a crop of consequence. They now supply a native sugar industry. Grapes, nuts, and other fruits are grown in abundance. Much of this produce is exported, but much also finds its way into the local marketplaces. For Turkey is still primarily an agricultural country. Over three quarters of her people make their living from the soil. 90% of them own their own farms. And in the small communities, the marketplace is the center of activity. Turkey produces many crops, but it is her tobacco that is known around the world. Almost all the cigarettes you smoke contain some Turkish tobacco in the blend. It must be carefully inspected, leaf by leaf, for the Turks are proud of the high reputation their product enjoys on the world market. To ensure a fair appraisal, the farmer is right on hand. Having passed, each bale is marked and made ready either for export or Turkey's own cigarette factories. Here, many find new employment in this growing industry. The Turkish leaf leads in quality because of its fine aroma, rich color, and low nicotine content. Nimble machines turn out cigarettes by the millions. They find a ready market throughout the world. Rapid industrialization has taken place since the Republic was founded in 1923. Factories are being erected and the natural resources of coal and iron ore are being developed on a national scale. Young men need no longer look only to the soil as a means of livelihood. Today, there are growing opportunities in industry. The goal is to make Turkey more self-sufficient and give her a more favorable balance of trade with the rest of the world. In the past, she had to import most of her cotton cloth. Now, her new textile industry meets over half her needs. Western dressmaking, in vogue only since the founding of the Republic, is a new occupation. It is now a popular means of livelihood for many of Turkey's young women. Wherever there are clothes and women to wear them, there will be fashion and fashion design. Here, young Turkish girls engage in this fascinating feminine occupation. The dresses modeled here by Gonzale Bazar, Miss Turkey and Miss Europe of 1952, attest to the freshness and appeal of modern Turkey's women. Some things need not change. One is the traditionally fine craftsmanship that produces the renowned Turkish carpets. On the other hand, something entirely new is the motion picture industry. Turkish producers turn out a fine product. Their movies teach as well as entertain, and for the millions of Turks who go to see them, they are a lesson in modern living. It is the people that make a nation and Turkey's people are looking forward. They know the future depends on the youth. Turkey has compulsory primary education. It is here in the lower schools that tomorrow's citizens are made. It is here they learn the principles of democracy that will guide their lives when they become grown men and women. Today, most of the younger generation can read and write the new alphabet considering that only one in 10 could even read in 1923, this is a singular achievement.
Many of the school buildings are sleek new structures. Incorporating the latest advancements in functional architecture, they make for a better, brighter educational plan. Since modern science has become so much a part of this new Turkey, laboratory facilities must be provided. Here, Turkish students solve for themselves the problems that once confronted Archimedes, Newton, Watt, and Edison. New sets of values and new ways of life are realized by these young minds. At the same time, there must be an appreciation of the best of the old that which has been tradition down through the ages. A part of this is religious faith. The vast majority of the people are Muslims. However, there is complete religious freedom for all, guaranteed by law. Something unique to Turkey are the village institutes. They are really school communities, completely self-sufficient. The students build their own schoolhouses and make their own clothes. In fact, half of all their school time is devoted to practical work. The rest to studies. Upon completion of the course, the graduate returns to his own village where he sets the example in modern methods and helps his neighbors to achieve a better way of life. State universities provide a free course of study for those who prove their merit through ability. Turkey's greatest need is for technicians, engineers, and professional men. Draftsmanship is important. So is the nation's health. Her doctors and nurses are trained in the most modern methods. Here, an appreciation of art is gained, and students are encouraged to try their own hand. Outlawed for centuries under the old Muslim law, art portraying the human figure now gives modern Turks a new field of expression and a new experience in Western culture. Music, too, is popular, and for the first time in their history, the Turks have the opportunity to study the great Western classical composers. But the Turks are a well-rounded people. In direct contrast to these sensitive young music students are these burly wrestlers. Wrestling is the traditional sport of Turkey. A favorite version is free wrestling, where the opponents are thoroughly greased before the match. The tussle is accompanied by the music of a woodwind horn, for this ritual is custom in Turkey's own version of the ancient sport. Turkey has made great strides forward and can be expected to keep up the pace. But all that is done must be done under the constant burden of possible aggression, for to the north lies Russia. Along the border, there must be perpetual vigilance. In the past, Turkey has often had to defend herself from Russian ambitions. As a result, compulsory military training has been common for centuries. Service is looked upon as one of the obligations of citizenship. In 1952, Turkey joined the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Her entry, along with that of Greece, greatly strengthened the free world's chance of maintaining the peace of Europe. Recently, King Paul of Greece visited President Bayar of Turkey. Together, they watched Turkey's armed forces display their might. The determination of these two countries to resist communist aggression is symbolized by this visit of the Greek king. Turkish forces, traditionally tough and fearless, now with modern equipment, provide one of the most capable armies in the free world. Turkey was one of the first members of the United Nations to send her troops to Korea. Here, they won a splendid combat reputation and also learned much of modern warfare. The technical knowledge these men pick up in Korea 
will make them more valuable citizens back home on their farms and in the factories. These men have learned both to fight alongside of and work with their Western allies. All Turkey's people are proud of the rapid development by which their nation has achieved a place among the modern democracies. But because this progress is comparatively recent, theirs is a nation in transition, a land of contrasts, as the new supplants the old. This shepherd remembers well the old ways, but his faith lies in the future. These walls that stood so firm against the invaders of the past are breached with ease by the steel rails of modern commerce. This then is Turkey, the land of in-between. Born out of the east, she now works with the west for the brighter future which she is seeking.